My name is Claire, and I'm 40 years old. I recently came out of a coma after 12 weeks. Those three months stood still for me. When I woke up, I was looking for my husband and my children. I had expected that they'd be at my bedside, but there was no one there when I awoke, disoriented. The nurses called the doctor, and for the first little while, there was a fury of activity around my bed as blood work, CAT scans, and other tests took place. I was willed here and there, and my mind felt like it was on overload as I listened to them talking around me. I heard one say that my mental faculties appeared to be completely intact, and that with some physical therapy to get my body back into shape, I had a chance of making a complete recovery. The first one to come and see me was my daughter. She's 18 years old and attends college a few hours away. Michaela was as surprised as I was that her dad wasn't there with me. She had been under the impression that he had been spending the majority of his time at my bedside. When I asked where my son, Stephen, was, Michaela explained to me that Stephen's paperwork had come through for him to join the army. And, with the belief that I wasn't going to pull through from the horrible car crash, he'd gone ahead and left. He had been under the impression that it would be better to go off and fight for people who could be saved instead of just waiting for the inevitable to happen to me. I could understand that. I told Michaela to wait to say anything to him until we knew that he could deal with the emotions that were sure to come from knowing that I was going to be alright. I yearned to see my husband again, to hold his hand and to feel the touch of his lips on mine. I had thought that he would feel the same, but it took him eight hours to show up in my hospital room. We live downtown, and even in traffic, it shouldn't take more than a half hour to make it there. He came into the room looking pale and unnerved. I supposed I could understand that. After all, he had been expecting me to die. What I wasn't expecting was when he leaned down to kiss me that I could smell lavender perfume on him. I've never worn that scent, so he wouldn't even have found it at home and squirted it on himself in an attempt to recall my scent. I asked who she was. I couldn't help myself. I just blurted it out. Michaela was in shock to know that I thought her father was cheating, but he didn't deny it. In fact, he told me right there and then that he'd found himself a lover and that he was sorry. It was in his grief that he'd made this terrible mistake. I asked him to leave my room. As much as I'd wanted to see him, I couldn't even look at him in that moment. He stood there, trying to make apologies, sounding like a fool. He told me that the reason it had taken him so long to come see me was because he felt ashamed. He would of course get rid of his lover immediately and concentrate all his efforts on me, his wife, whom he had promised in his marriage vows to stand with in health and sickness until death do us part. He had felled those vows and in doing so had felled me and our children. But we had been together for 23 years and I wasn't sure if I could just throw all of that away. But I also didn't know if I could stay with him after all this time. Michaela stayed with me that night, and we both cried some happy tears, and a lot of sad ones too. I told her that I'd figure out what to do about her dad, but that I needed time to process. I had expected that if he was going to take a lover, that he could have actually waited to see if I would really die. But maybe I'm just being naive. To my knowledge, my husband had never strayed before, and that's why I decided to take him back. It took me a few days to reach the conclusion, but I learned a long time ago that good people make the wrong choices for a lot of reasons, and my accident had changed a lot of things. In addition to my physical therapy, we're also seeing a marriage counselor, so we can heal and move forward.